Hello and welcome to the Super Sentence Stacker Classroom. Hello my wonderful word weavers, my precious pen pushers, my sentence shapers. Welcome one and all. Uh, you're here with me, Mrs Considine, and I'm going to help you improve and sharpen your writing. And everything we do in, your in the classroom today will make you better. We really care about the sentences we build so they are sharp and vivid and wonderful. And together we are the Super Sentence Stackers. Right then, what do I need you to do? Well, I need you to be excited, ready to write us and have a piece of paper, a pencil or a pen. And it would be a really good idea if you make some space for a thinking side, a space to jot, collect, gather, a place to hoard words and put them in your vocabulary vault because the best writers really do spend time looking out for the best words for the job. I want to now celebrate a piece of writing from yesterday linked to the film Dear Alice and the child on the celebration board today is Aaron from Hackbridge Primary and I want you to look closely here at Aaron's work because he has gathered so many jottings on thinking side and we've got really good words like heartbroken, dismayed and these aren't my words, those are all his ideas and um, there are a mix of my ideas but he's hopped on those and gathered even more synonyms. So, Aaron, I was so pleased with that. And I'm going to read a bit of your writing now. I'm going to make it a bit bigger and a bit clearer for me. OK. Alice tried to get her mum's attention. There was no reply. Mum had drifted away into the world of work. Alice waved her drawing at her, but she replied with a Stop it, not now please, look. However, Alice was not going to give up so easily. She tapped her mum, but this time she received the oh, later sweetie look. Alice, however, was very keen to show her the drawing that she had tried to get her attention again. Uh, Unfortunately, she got the give me a moment ghastly stare. Aaron, this writing is superb. I absolutely adore the way you followed the model but laced it all with your own ideas. Congratulations. And remember, I'm always on the lookout for children's work that we can celebrate the next day. Right then, we now know good word collectors make great writers and we are going to build some sentences around a particular film. What is today's film? Oh, it's stunning. This is an award winning film of chance and two people and wishes. Uh, the film is called The Wish Granter and after you have listened in the classroom and made good notes then I'd like you to watch the film. I'd like you to enjoy it, take it in and really absorb the whole film. And there is a link below in the description where you can find the film easily. The next thing I need you to do as the writer is choose a chunk. And Mrs. C has broken the film down into little time chunks. Why have I done that? 
because I never want your writing to go across the whole film, just one part. So when you've chosen your part, and I'm going to choose mine soon, I'm going to challenge you just to write nine sentences. Don't worry if you can't make nine, but definitely no more than nine. Uh, and then all of our chunks will be about the same size. And as I read them across the country and across the globe, I can tie them all together and make a one big cohesively read story. Okay, also in the description below, you'll find a choose your chunk sheet. And Mrs. C is going to choose chunk three or plot point three. This is when the couple are really hopeful and they throw in their glittering coins, hoping that their wishes come true. Okay, so there are some rules for super sentence stackers. You have to tell me your name. Um, this is my name, Mrs. Considine. And you write down your age, that's really important. And my chunk is three today. And in every lesson, we organise three challenges. So what are today's challenges? While I'm thinking about those, I want you to find a piece of paper, tick. Make sure you've got a pencil or a pen, tick. Oh, so ticked, I ticked it off. And actually, then think about um, laying out your work like Aaron's. Think inside, write inside. Okay, so I'm going to choose some challenges from the rainbow. What are my challenges today? Well, the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is think about action. And we're going to choose action and we're very carefully going to think of some precise verbs. That's our first challenge. Now, I've put this challenge in my basic lens because I think you'll find this really easy. I want you to include a sentence that has but in the middle of it. You're going to use that conjunction and I think you will find that really easy using a but in a sentence. The last thing I'm going to ask you to do is build me a relative clause. That is going to be an embedded clause where we are going to start with the word who. But I'm going to help you do that. You are now under my stewardship and the blank piece of paper is where our thinking and learning is going to happen. You're going to see me do two things. You are going to see me uh, be a demonstration writer. You're going to look inside my mind. You're going to see me tussle and tangle with words. And now I'm going to get started. Right then. The first challenge, I'm just going to make a jotting of this, is precise verb. So I don't forget. And I'm going to make some notes about chunk three. Ooh. I need some other rules sorted out, don't I? We are all going to write a third person narrative and we need some character names. And there are three characters in this film, so who is who? Um, our first character is Malcolm. Mm, he's not had a very good day. He's coming home from college and it's not gone well. And then we have another person called Audrey. And Audrey is running the floristry shop. So Malcolm and Audrey. But there's someone else. A little creature that lives under the square. He is a magical type of creature. He's called the Wish Granter. That's his name, actually. The wish granter. I'm going to write that down, the wish granter. So we're going to be using words like he and she and the wish granter is a he as well. 
thank you. That sorts that out so that we have one big story for the nation when I read it. Okay, here we go then. I am now going to gather some ideas about chunk three. Uh, so this is the part where Malcolm gets off the bus and he walks towards the um, square. Mm. Right. I'm going to start with that. I'm going to start with Malcolm. Malcolm, um, yeah, I want to say that he's had a rubbish day. Um, so he, he also feels a bit rubbish. Malcolm's day uh, felt uh, very long and unproductive. Um, very long and very unproductive. That's nice, using that intensifier twice there. Uh, it feels like it matches now. Malcolm's day felt very long and very unproductive, full stop. He walked. Actually, if I'm thinking about doing precise verbs, it's okay, but I'm just going to check out. Could I make walked um, have negative intent? Because he's, he's not having a good time. Let's go to the thesaurus thinking board, shall we? Okay, I'm going to put on the action symbol and I'm going to think about, well, I'm going to write down walked so I don't get confused. Um, stumbled, mm, that isn't quite right. Uh, drifted, do you know, that's quite good. He's quite aimless, isn't he? Trudged. Oh, Mrs. C, that's a great word, and it's got negative intent. Trudged. I love that. I'm going to take trudged because he's a bit fed up, isn't he? Malcolm's day felt very long and very unproductive. He trudged. Oh, he trudged off the bus. And let's take him to the square now. And something just fell down and drifted to the hmm, to the square to the piazza I like piazza it's another word for square Malcolm's day felt very long and very unproductive he trudged off the bus and drifted to the piazza hmm, that's a good start Mm, I mustn't forget now about this but sentence I want to do, but I'm going to make some notes uh, about what happens next. He keeps walking and then he um, maybe goes to the fountain and he's, he's thinking maybe he can turn his luck around and he's got a coin in his hand. Um, but also we have... Audrey introduced the florist and her coin jar. Mm. Actually, there's a lot to do here. Let me just write down coin jar. Yes, I've got to think about this. So I've got to have Malcolm moving to the fountain and introduce Audrey. Right, let's get Malcolm moving to the fountain first. Um, maybe uh, the wishing fountain can help Malcolm out. Uh, oh, could change his luck. That's better. Less chatty. Could change his luck. Oh, Mrs. C, you've rushed there. Write that smartly. Good girl. Change. Maybe the wishing fountain could change his luck. Full stop. And then I've got to take the reader's mind to the other side of the square. Oh, on the other side of the square, on the other side. Maybe I should call it the on the other side of the square, comma, Audrey was closing 
her floristry shop was closing her floristry shop. Full stop. Well, I haven't done anything I wanted to yet. I haven't used but in a sentence. Uh, and I need to think about that now. <sighs> I also need to introduce this idea that it wasn't a rubbish day for Audrey. You know, Malcolm's having a rubbish day. Audrey's having a rubbish day too. I don't want to use the word rubbish. Awful. That's better. Awful's, um, yeah, it's a bit more formal and more precise. It was an awful. <laughs> Did you notice there? I didn't put a awful. When you have two vowels like that, you have to use an. An awful day for business. An awful day for business. Oh, <laughs> like a gift. I can use my butt here now. But she found one coin. She found one coin. I'm not sure about one. Let me see uh, what I could do here. What she actually notices, what she sees. Let me rub out those words. I'm going to write down one. It's okay, but is that the best word? One coin. A singular coin. A lone coin. A solitary coin. I think I'm going to use solitary because Malcolm and Audrey also feel solitary. You know, they're looking for love, actually. Mm. So let's go back up here. It was an awful day for business, but she found a solitary coin. Solitary coin. I like that. Full stop. Um, maybe I need to say where she found it. Uh, not full stop, but she found a solitary coin um, at the bottom of her coin jar. At the bottom of her coin jar. That's how bad it was for business today. There's only one coin in it. Oh dear. A solitary coin at the bottom of her coin jar. I'm now going to talk about um, them both arriving at the fountain. They arrive at the fountain. I also want to talk about uh, they get there at the same time and they make a wish at the same time. Oh, that she found a solitary coin at the bottom of her coin jar. Uh, I'm going to add a bit more there that she could make. She could make a wish on. And if I add that on like that, I then can bring them in both together in unison. Right, um, but what am I trying to challenge myself to do? Well, I'm trying to do a complex sentence where I drop in an embedded clause. So, I need to deal with them together now. I'm going to say two dreamers, two dreamers, two wishers. Oh, I like two dreamers. But you know what? I'm going to put an adjective before dreamers to really accentuate to the reader, you know, how hopeful they are. Oh, hopeful, that'll get me going. I'm just going to check out, is that the best word? Um, oh, let me move that out of the way. Here we go. So, Write down hopeful, Mrs. C. And let's see what else could be in this thesaurus thinking family. Hopeful, romantic, sentimental, two poignant dreamers. Mm, not sure about that. Uh, two, oh, two young. I like, actually, I like hopeful. I'm going to take that. 
let me go back here, two young, hopeful dreamers. I put in two adjectives there, but I like it. Two young, hope, hopeful dreamers. And now I'm going to drop in my clause, beginning with who, who both, who both wanted to find true love, who both wanted to find true love, oh, who both wanted to find true love, end the clause there, stood, oh, did you see I went back there and put a little comma in, I probably need to make that a little bit more obvious, it's too small, stood either side of the fountain and made a something wish, a momentous, a momentous wish in unison. Oh, I'm going to go back and reread this. I am tingling with excitement as I read it. Malcolm's day felt very long and very unproductive. He trudged off the bus and drifted to the piazza. Maybe the wishing fountain could change his luck. On the other side of the square, Audrey was closing her floristry shop. It was an awful day for business, but she found a solitary coin at the bottom of her coin jar that she could make a wish on. Two young, hopeful dreamers, who both wanted to find true love, stood either side of the fountain and made a momentous wish in unison. Well, a story of hope, romance and love. I think you're going to really like writing this because it's also a really funny film and the wish doesn't go to plan and the wish grunter has to sort it out. I'm going to be looking out, everybody, for precise verbs, a really good but in the middle of a sentence and can you drop in a who clause? Oh, I can't wait to read your work. Make sure you use the hashtag Super Sentence Stackers and get your work into me on Twitter at Jane Considine, on Facebook at Jane Considine Education, and you can even hand it in on Instagram. I love reading your work and I try and comment on as many as I can. So, Get your work into me by 12.30 and be on the lookout tomorrow at quarter to ten to see if you've made it on the celebration board. Thank you, my super sentence stackers, and I'll see you all tomorrow.